In this video, we will be discussing how to approach friction problems in physics, specifically coefficient of friction. Now remember, friction is a force that opposes motion, and so that when we use a coefficient of friction, this is a value that shows the relationship between the force of friction between two objects and the normal reaction between the objects that are involved. It's also a value that's sometimes used in physics to find uh, objects' normal force or their frictional force when other methods are not available. Frictional resistance is related to the relative motion of two solid objects, and it's usually going to be proportional to the force which uh, presses the surfaces together, as well as the roughness of the surfaces. And since it's the force that's perpendicular or normal to the surface, we indicate the normal force with a capital N. Now, the, the frictional resistance can be written just as such. And so that the frictional force is presumed to be proportional to the coefficient of friction. And since the amount of force required to move an object starting from rest is usually greater than the force required to keep it moving at a constant velocity once it starts, the two coefficients of friction are sometimes quoted for a given pair of surfaces, depending on what two surfaces are moving together. And so here you can see the types of coefficients of friction that we can see for the, some of the various types of material you may run across in a typical lab setup or a physics problem. And you can see the static force of friction and the kinetic force of friction. And here I have just another coefficient of uh, friction for starting friction and for sliding friction for some various surfaces. And so those numbers may be important when we approach solving a coefficient of friction problem. Now here we have an example where we have a box weighing 450 newtons and it's pulled along a level floor at a constant speed by a rope. And it makes an angle of 30 degrees with the floor as it's shown by a figure and I'll put that on the next page. If the force on the rope is uh, 260 newtons, what is the horizontal component or the force of friction on this force, and what is the normal force, and what is the coefficient of sliding friction. And so as we look at this, we're going to write down what our given information is, and so that we know that our um, angle is 30 degrees, we know that the weight of the box is 450 newtons, and the force on the rope is 260 newtons. So we have our basic formulas right across here. Now here I've colored in the box and we have this floor, this uh, flat floor right across here. And so we know that the box is pulling down at a force of 450 newtons because that's the weight. Then we have our vertical force we have our force of friction that will be pulling the box in this direction. We have the rope that's pulling with a force of 260 newtons and at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, in our solution, we're going to begin by determining our horizontal component, which is our force of friction. Our force of friction will equal the force of our rope times the cosine of our angle. You'll remember the force on the rope was 260 newtons. We have the cosine of 30. Multiply, and so we get our horizontal component as 225 newtons. Next, we need to determine the normal force. And so to determine our normal force, we're going to have that force of the weight pulling down minus the force of the rope times the sine of the angle. So the force of the weight, the box weighed 450 newtons. The force of the rope was 260 newtons. We take the sine of 30, and that's where we got 0.5. We do the math, and so we get that vertical component of the force of the rope as being 320 newtons. Finally, we're asked to determine the coefficient of friction. To do so, we'll take the force of friction, which we got from A, which was 225. We'll divide that by the, um, the vertical component, which was 320 newtons. Do the math, and our coefficient of friction was 0 0.703. You'll notice that there are no units associated with coefficient of friction.
Here we have a second example where we have a wood block weighing 130 newtons it rests on an inclined plane. The diagram will be on the next page. The coefficient of sliding friction between the block and the plane is 0 0.620. We're asked to find the angle of the inclined plane at which the block will slide down the plane at a constant speed once it started moving. Now we know the, the weight of the block is 130 newtons. We know our coefficient of friction is 0 0.620. We do not know the angle. We have our basic equations right here. We'll move on to our solution. Now as we look at our diagram, you can see that we have our block. You can see it. we have our weight pulling down. You can see the force of the plane and the force of pulling up. We can see the normal force and then we can see the angle. So the point at which the block begins to slide is when the force along the inclined plane will be balanced by the force of friction. And so we'll have force of the plane equals force of, fr of uh, friction. What we're going to do now is we're going to substitute values into those equations. So what you'll notice is that the term on the right was also the definition for coefficient of friction. So we have the tangent of the angle equals our coefficient. So we're going to move that over. That means our angle will equal our inverse tangent or second tangent of our coefficient. Uh, so that means we'll have our inverse tangent of 0 0.620 and we would have an angle of 31.8. Here we have a 5 kilogram block is pulled across the table by a horizontal force of 40 newtons. We have a frictional force of 8 newtons that's opposing motion. We want to calculate the acceleration. Now we know that force equals mass times acceleration. We know that we're pulling with uh, 40 newtons of force. We have a resistance of 8 newtons of force pulling this way. So 40 minus 8 is the 32 newtons of force that's pulling in the direction. So we have our 32 is our force. We have our mass as 5 and our acceleration is unknown. That's our x. So we do simple algebraic solve for x. Our acceleration would be 6.4 meters per second squared. Now you'll notice that we do like to do diagrams when we do physics problems. Here we have a diagram where we have a 35 kilogram crate. Uh, we have uh, the mass due to gravity. We have our normal force, we have our applied force, and we have our frictional force. Now we're asked to solve uh, this using Newton's first law, and that's what this stands for. And the problem states if the coefficient of kinetic friction between a 35 kilogram crate and the floor is 0 0.30, what horizontal force is required to move the crate to the right at a constant speed across the floor? So our applied force will equal our force of friction. Now remember our force of friction has a formula of uh, coefficient of friction times normal force. So we could say our applied force equals our coefficient of friction times our normal force. However, our normal force could have a formula of mass times gravity. So now we say our applied force has a formula of coefficient of friction times mass times gravity. We were given the coefficient of friction as 0 0.30 in the problem. The mass of the crate was 35 kilograms. The pull of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. We do the math and we get our applied force as being 102.9 newtons. Again, we do our diagram to show our normal force, our mass due to gravity, our force of friction, and our applied force. Here we're asked to use Newton's second law to solve the problem. Suppose that we have that same 35 kilogram crate. It was not moving at a constant speed, but was accelerating at 0 0.70 meters per second squared. Calculate the applied force. The coefficient of kinetic friction is still 0 0.30. Now our net force equals our mass times acceleration. So our applied force minus our force of friction would equal our mass times acceleration. Our applied force minusing the force of friction, which if you remember the formula is coefficient of friction times normal force, will equal our mass times acceleration. So we take our applied force minus our coefficient of friction. Now remember normal force can also be mass times uh, gravity, and that equals our mass times acceleration. Therefore, our applied force would equal our mass times acceleration plus 
our coefficient of uh, friction times mass times gravity. So to calculate our problem, our mass is 35 kilograms. Our uh, acceleration was 0 0.70 meters per second squared, plus our coefficient of friction was 0 0.30. The mass was 35 kilograms. The pull of gravity was 9.8. We do the math. We get an applied force of 127.4 newtons. And we have uh, one more final problem. We have a 5 kilogram block sitting on a uh, 30 degree incline. It is attached to a string that is thread over a pulley mounted at the top of an incline. We have a 7.5 kilogram block hanging from the string. We have to calculate two things. The uh, tension in the string if the acceleration of the system is 1.2 meters per second squared and the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we begin, we have our diagram out here, um, and so you're going to see that we have that angle. You're going to see our um, block sitting on that 30 degree incline. You're going to see uh, the normal force here. You're going to see due to the force of gravity. Now as we begin doing our calculation, we're going to take our net force equals our mass times acceleration. So we're going to take our mass 1 times gravity minus capital T equals mass 1 times acceleration. So that the tension, which is capital T, minus parentheses force of friction plus mass 2 gravity sine of the angle will equal mass 2 acceleration. So that when we simplify, our normal force will equal our mass 2 gravity cosine of our angle. Now let's begin looking at our solution. So we had our net force equals mass times acceleration. So our mass times our gravity minus our tension will equal our mass times our acceleration. So that means our, our tension would equal our mass times gravity minus our mass times acceleration. Our mass in our problem was 7.5. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared minus our mass times, if you look back on the previous slide, it said the tension was 1.2. We do the math and we get the tension as being 64.5 newtons. Now here's where physics gets a little confusing. It's where we take our formula and we move it to the correct form. So we have our tension minus our uh, coefficient of friction plus mass to gravity sine of our angle, and that's in parentheses, equals mass 2 times acceleration. Now we're going to get rid of these parentheses, and so we end up with our tension minus our force of friction minus mass 2 gravity sine of our angle equals mass 2 acceleration. Now we're going to uh, take the force of friction and we're going to sub in that formula, coefficient of friction times normal force. And so that's what we did right across here. And now that we're wanting to solve for our coefficient of friction, we're going to take that and we're going to divide it out and move that over to the other side. Now once we've done that, we want to isolate our coefficient of friction. And so here we're going to divide each side by our um, normal force. And so we get our working formula. Now also remember that our normal force has a formula of m2g cosine of our angle. So we're going to sub this in in place of normal force. Now that we've got everything into our formula, we're going to plug in our numbers. Now we had our tension. We had calculated right here at 64.5. Then we looked at our mass was 5, our acceleration from the uh, previous slide was 1.2, that was stated in part A, minus our mass times the pull of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the sine of 30, divided by the mass times the pull of gravity, 9.8 meters per second, times the cosine of 30. We do all the math, and we get our coefficient of kinetic friction as 0.80 newtons.